this is Sunhe. And I am um, the second, I just started my second year. And we will gonna talk about the scenarios, future scenarios and the bioeconomy strategy. So it's gonna be a little bit different from the other presentations that we had until now. So in the end, with all these technologies that we talked about, or the studies that we talked about before, we want to put them together and make the bioeconomy strategy. In order to do that, because all the bioeconomy inventories, like the investments will be in the future, we would like to know what will matter in the future, what will be the key activity data. And in order to do that, to make the time dependent inventories, we will need some future scenarios to play um, together. So here, the friend, here we assume that Fran France is going to go low carbon um, fossil carbon free. So it's a best case situation for France. But even though France aims for that, there will be matters that we cannot control um, from happening from the outside of the world. So we need to know what the global background scenarios will be. But of course, we cannot predict one future. So we would like to have um, multiple future scenarios to be able to um, have where the France can be situated. So we would like to have some plausible multiple features. So of course, there are a lot of studies who have done the multiple future scenarios. So we would like to study the existing leading scenarios in the field um, done by the international agencies, well-recognized international agencies to uncover the key mechanism of the existing studies. And that will be, will be do that through the cause and effect relationship that is um, present. Yay. Doesn't work together with the annotation. Sorry. Yeah. So these are the existing studies that we have um, went through, and here we have six global climate and environmental scenarios, and the seventh one is from an intelligence report. So that's for the comparison. And they, you can see that most of them have multiple scenarios from three to five. Um, there is one study that has only one scenario here. And you can also see that every um, study has different focus, the SSP, the Shared Socioeconomic Pathway, which will be fed into the IPCC um, AR6, um, is focused on climate change mitigation and adaptation, but the others are from energy or food or bioeconomy or material focused. So what we want to see here is that what is their assumption? What are the logics that are used in these um, studies? Mostly um, they're using the narratives and also the um, quantitative models. So we want to know what is the causal relationship that is based, that they're based on. So what we use is the um, causal loop diagram, which is a well-known method for describing complex systems. So we would like to visually represent which variables are linked together and in which direction. So we go through text mining of the original studies. So example, there will be sample sentence like this. And here we retrieve the, oh, the carbon taxes uh, impact negatively to agriculture production, which means that here, when you see the carbon related causal relationship, carbon tax goes up and agriculture production goes down. So this is a negative relationship. And this will be represented in blue in the diagram. And after that, when the agriculture production in livestock goes down, um, the agriculture employment also goes down, so which is a positive, so it goes in the same direction. So this is a positive relationship, which will be in the red arrows. So this is one sample diagram, which is um, SSP study. And this is only based on their narratives, the storylines, and not the individual modeling. So this is the assumption that we found from the narratives and we here we will go through them one by one so here from the left hand corner we start from income and you can see that when income increases they assume that the female education also goes up so this is a positive relationship they're presented by red arrow and when female education goes up the assumption is that the fertility rate goes down so this is negative relationship in blue arrow and when fertility rate goes down, 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 it, the population also goes down. So this is the same direction. So this is positive. And once the population goes up or down, the fossil resource use will go in the same direction as population. So either up or down. So we say that population goes up, fossil resource goes up. So this is also red. And once fossil resource use goes up, 
Of course, the GHG emission also goes up. So this is also positive relationship in red. And as you know, when the GHG emission goes up, the ch challenges to mitigation is also going to increase. So this is also a red arrow. So here you can see that there are red arrows and blue arrows, and these are what they represent the directions. So, and the other diagrams you can also see have very different shapes. This is, yeah. This is from FAO. And this is from a, a World Economic Forum studies. And this is from OECD study. And this is from GRC study. And you can also see that the patterns, not of course they look different, but uh, there are some pattern that for example, like this one or the first one that you saw, they're more interconnected. So there are more back and forth connections and they look more circular in a way. There are a lot of interactions between the variables in many directions. It spreads out from one and to another. But like the one before here, this is more linear. So from the left to right, they move in a linear way and they don't go back and forth a lot. So most variables are just connected to one or two or three maximum. And this is the differences that we found, the pattern that we found, that there are some studies um, consider more circular or interconnectivity, where while some studies, the assumptions are in a more linear way. Yes. And you can also see that the variables used are very different, but we will go to the common variables that are used. And those are represented in a table. So the, from the diagrams that we saw, we put them, so these are one diagram per one study. So one study has several um, scenarios, but we also, we, what we found is that all scenarios have the same logic. They use the same model. So even though what the outcome and the basic um, condition of the scenarios all vary, how the variables move, how they interact is basically um, the logic is the same. So like the SSD, the population assumption that we said, there are scenarios where the population go down or population go up, but the female education will go down or up together with the income um, or populate. Um, yeah, sorry. So the direction will be the same. So here the result is coming to one table and you can see that every study is put together. And these acronyms represent the study OECD, IEA, FAO. And what here it says that when the mitigation policy increases, the climate change decrease so we can mitigate the climate change. So it's represented in blue, so that's a negative relationship. But when mitigation policies work increase, the food security goes up. So this is a positive relationship represented in red. And the acronyms here is that this relationship, mitigation policy and climate change is mentioned in these three studies, while mitigation policies and food security is mentioned in this one study. Or here we can see that when the trade liberalization or globalization happens and the economy grow. So these three studies mentioned that in their report and this is a positive relationship. And here you can also see that when the globalization happened, health, but this is yellow. Yellow means that it can be either positive or negative depending on the other conditions. So it doesn't necessarily mean that it always leads to healthier um, human life. Here you can see that some studies have, um, so trade liberalization usually decreases the food price. So when the globalization goes up, it's blue, so it's negative, the price goes down. But in some cases in this study, they say that it can go either up and down. So it can be represented in one cell in different two colors. And we can also see that they, most studies, there are cells that are only occupied by one study but or also multiple studies but there is no disagreement. So there's no one cell, there is both blue and red at the same time. There's one with the yellow, but yellow means both sides. So this, you can see that the most studies have somehow have, don't disagree with each other's logic. Um, but there are some key findings that we found that the, the some feedback loops, especially from the nature outcome like climate change or biodiversity loss, um, back to the socioeconomic, human socioeconomic is missing. So 
So there were studies where they, one or two, that considered all the climate change increases and then the land productivity goes down. So of course that impact on um, economy, agriculture and everything. But, or like the climate change can cause conflict and then goes into human society. But other than those two cases, the nature outcome was not coming back to the human society. And also the shocks and disruptions like the pandemic that we're having, the crisis, it was not considered so much. So there were some studies where there is shock and market disruption that goes in, but this was almost the only one in the climate scenarios. But in the, um, oh, I just forgot that. Oh. in the intelligence report, the shocks and disruptions and the natural disaster and even the ones that caused by climate change was considered as a major um, one big category. So that was the big dif difference between the climate scenarios and the intelligence reports. And also there was some simplification of trade and liber um, trade liberalization and the local movement and the international cooperation. Here in the SSP scenarios, you can see that the globalized trade will increase nat natural ecosystem and also GHG emission reduction, but there are also um, studies that say differently, but here it seems that it's a little bit simplified that there is only positive effect of globalization. Yeah, and also there's a limited representation that because it's only represented by GDP and GDP per capita in the economic outcome. And of course the biomass supply and demand is a little bit limitedly represented. Of course, because some studies are limited to only looking into food or energy, but this, these are the, and also, but with the climate change scenario in the SSP study, biomass supply was not going into the very depth of like what, especially they talk a lot about biomass for energy from biomass, but not much about the materials, the chemicals and the rubbers, you know, for example, or pharmaceuticals that also has to be replaced from the fossil. Um, yeah, so where do we go from here? So we, one, we looked into these scenarios because we initially wanted to use the existing scenarios, but maybe we found that we were not going to use them directly, but we can use the cause and effect relationship that we have uncovered and this mechanism that we have. So we would like to adapt and create multiple global future conditions for the where the French national strategy can act on to find the marginal supplies of the, for example, like the key activity data, which can be like marginal supplies of key bioeconomy services like electricity, heating, fuel, pharmaceuticals, materials, and so on. This is the end of the presentation. Thank you so much. And I will hand it over to the next person.